Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Multimodular. Today, plugging a guitar into our Eurorack via the Board Brain Injector. This module here. The injector takes your guitar, turns it into a Eurorack signal, adds some amp simulation, some drive, adds an effect send, and also extracts envelopes and gates. <laughs> It's a, it's a guitar thing, it's guitar into Eurorack. Now with this we can do all sorts of different things, but what I wanted to focus on is just what the injector can offer you. Now injector is not the first module I've seen that lets you plug your guitar into your Eurorack, but it does have a few nice features that makes it more than just an interface. It has amp simulation in there, it has the ability to sound like a guitar, like an electric guitar without having to wire in some kind of amplifier or microphone. I can just plug straight in and it sounds pretty great, pretty great. Now this is not this is not a video about my guitar noodling skills. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plug in a few guitars, go through the sort of things that it has, then look at the CV potential, pull a few things out, run it through a few effects, and have a bit of a, a jolly old jamming time. Does that sound all right? And I'll just take you through the guitar features of the module. So within this section, which is sort of at the middle, at the top half, you've got the CV extraction of the envelope and the gate, which we'll get to in a minute, to bottom bit, you've just got your inputs and your effects end. In the middle, you have a nice, nice fat drive knob, and you've got presence, character, brightness, and sim on or off. That's the amp simulator on or off. Now the simulation apparently is done through a complex arrangement of filters, which is interesting, but also irrelevant. We just wanna know kinda of what it sounds like. So if I wind the drive all the way down to the bottom, you just about get a signal going through that you can't really hear. There's definitely something there. Yeah, kind of, you need to just put it up a notch. I mean, you also have this separate level knob and you've got a little bit of a dance going on between drive and level to get it there. But this is all the way up, as clean as I can get it. Now there's just a little bit of reverb on, otherwise everything is just coming from the injector. But as you dial in the drive, <laughs> dial down the level, Start it up to the top. So you've got presence, which messes around with the bottom end, thickens it out. Character which deals with the top end, really. Well, sort of the mids, I suppose. It's quite interesting. They probably could have done with a CV input for that. Because there's enough of something interesting there that modulating it could have been quite nice. And 
then you've got this bright switch. So you can turn the simulation off. And just leaves you really with the, the drive and the preamp. I don't know really why you'd like to do that. I think leaving that on is a great idea. Now, I'm absolutely no expert on guitar tone or any of those sorts of things, but to me, it sounds pretty rock and roll. I don't think I could ask for anything more. It's just sounds like a nicely grungy, gritty guitar, which is perfect. It's absolutely right up my alley of just vaguely indie guitar playing. So let's try a couple of other guitars just to give you an impression of what it can sound like with some other sort of things going through it. And we'll swap back and forward a little bit, I imagine. So this is a, a crappy old 40 year old Columbus Series 3 guitar, but it has, has dual humbuckers. I think that's what they're called. So it's a lot louder. I'll take the level down a bit. Back the drive all the way up. So that's a humbucker. Let's try an acoustic. Well, an electroacoustic, evidently, because I have a plug for it. Now this has only got a, a tiny little piezo um, pickup in here somewhere, I think. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> so it's probably gonna need a lot more level. through there no hardly at all so I'm just gonna knock that up a little bit Turn the simulator off for the acoustic guitar. Of course, you wouldn't be playing like this through Eurorack. You'd be doing bleepy, blopy, sort of experimental, sort of just a little, and then you'd pull out of that some kind of uh, 
something and then you granulate it and then run it through something else potentially but I don't know I mean usage is entirely up to you there's no reason why you couldn't be folding it into your modular but you know as you like so that's a bit of acoustic let's try some some bass acoustic's not quite it's not quite there, is it? It's not quite there. It's not designed for that. It's designed for, uh, you know, a hotter pickup from a electric guitar, I would say. But it still has potential. You could get in there. I mean, you might want to go through uh, a, a DI box or something with an acoustic guitar before plugging into the injector. But it just, you know, it just depends. Well, that's what we're here to find out. It's what we're here to experiment with. So, bass guitar then. I bet you didn't know I had so many instruments I can't very play very well. a little bit of drive on it but just bring it down to something a little bit simpler I don't really play bass I like it with a pick I mean, I hope that's helpful in playing a few things through it, just to give you a flavour of what's possible. Now, perhaps let's look at what's going on in terms of Eurac. What good is this? So far, all I've been doing is playing with a module which which replicates some kind of amp simulator, and it's it's decent. I like it. But how does that relate to our Eurac? What's the point? What's the point of all this? Well, there's various points. The first point is simply if you were playing your guitar alongside your Eurorack, you could have it all go through the same mixing and processing to a single output going to, to the desk or the front of house or whatever. It gives you um, an opportunity to plug your guitar in without having to bring a load of other gear. That in itself is a useful, is a useful function. But more so because we can start to extract things and wire it in to other parts of your Eurac to create textures, sounds and ideas that perhaps you hadn't previously thought of. So first off, let's talk about what this is kicking out in terms of control voltage. At the top, you have an envelope output, an inverted envelope output, and also a gate out. And that's extracted from the sound that you're playing in from your guitar. So we can show this on my little scope here very simply take the envelope out plug it into there and then as I play you can see on the scope that we are creating an envelope an envelope the sound the amplitude of the guitar sound is being extracted and converted into control voltage now I have a switch here that goes slow, medium or fast in order to give you either an instant envelope or something if you put it to slow, which has a little bit more of a tack and a longer decay release to it. Now you have a knob here to control the sensitivity so I can bring that down and it creates a smaller envelope. And 
it's going to be relative to the amount of energy you put into it. So if you're just doing a little, little bit of lead line, it's not going to take a whole lot in envelope terms off that. But a nice thumping chord, then yeah, absolutely. But again, depends on the sensitivity. Let's bring that up. See how that looks on a single note. trying to be subtle. I don't think you're trying to pull the individually vibratoing bending bit of expression off my guitar. You're just trying to get a sound and taking the shape of that sound to apply to something else. What would we use this for? What on earth is the point of that? Well, the probably the most obvious use is to use it as a kind of an auto wire through a filter. So I can use the effects end for doing this rather than sending the whole uh, output of injector through an effect and then on I can use the effects end which has got down here so I can route a cleaner part of the signal through the effect because the effect send happens before the amp simulation so I can route a cleaner signal through something and then that comes back through going through the amp simulator after that it gives you options, I suppose. If you like the sound of that, that's great. If you don't, you can always do it the other way around. So let's go via the send here into a filter, signal in, and then take the signal out into the return. <laughs> So I've now got myself rather nicely, I think, going through a filter. Now, of course, I could plug a, you know, an LFO into this. Like so, or rather than using an LFO in there messing the filter about, let's take the envelope. So take the envelope, take it through my scope here just to keep everything uh, making sense. Plug that in there. So now the envelope generated by the sound of the guitar. is affecting the filter. Put it onto fast. Interesting, interesting. 
So already I'm starting to use control voltage, starting to use parts of my modular to affect how the guitar is going to sound. Right, so let's use something a bit more modular like. Let's go through the middle instruments beads. Stick that in. Ooh. Ooh. Never quite know what's going to happen with that. Now I found that the signal going through the beads is really loud. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. It's nuts, that thing. <laughs> but what I think is, it really sort of comes up for me, is that Bees is actually far more interesting using a more interesting sound source. Just sticking in a bleep from something, yeah, I mean, that can be fun and all that, but I've discovered all sorts of new things about Bees. I had no idea exactly what they did because I'm just putting in a synthesizer sound. Whereas once I start putting guitar through it, it takes on a whole new life. A whole new life. It's very interesting. Let's do something similar with the data bender over here. <laughs> Thank you. 
And can you imagine the nuts it's going to be <laughs> if I plug that one into there and then take the output through the data bender. Bring that down a little bit. What on earth? <laughs> what on earth could happen? take my envelope to change something like the time. <laughs> What's that? Right, so I mean, you don't, you don't have to do that. It doesn't have to be so crazy. It can be, it can be simpler. I mean, I've got a magneto up here, which in many ways is a classic uh, guitar pedal. Stick that, stick that into the loop. Need some level back now. I'm no longer going through the super hot beats. Flutter. Now the other thing we have is a gate. Now we can use a gate out to, to trigger an envelope. Perhaps if we don't want to use this envelope, we could be triggering a different envelope over something else. Hmm. Or a combination of those. I mean, you could use the gate to a molten and then molt that to various different things. So whenever you hit something hard enough, that gate turns on and it enables something to happen. So one example I can give you, if I come out of the magneto, is moving on a sequence. So if I take my gate output from here, plug that into the clock input on my Turing machine. Now you've got a level knob here for the gate to make it either very sensitive or you can knock it back so it only comes on. It never comes on. It only comes on when you really hit it. 
No, still not coming on. There we go. I tend to find it needs to be up there. Maybe I need to turn the drive. No, it's no different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the gate to move the Turing machine to advance a note onto a oscillator. Right. So what's happening is that every time I hit something, every time the gate fires, it's moving the Turing machine on, which generates a new pitch, which I'm just putting through a quantizer up here into into this oscillator. Now I think that should probably go through my filter just for fun. And I should probably use my envelope as well. So I can use my envelope on the filter. All right, just stay with me. I'm going to use the gate out as well. I'm going to put that into a malt and use it not only on the clock. I'm also going to use it to drive an envelope to envelope the sound slightly. It's this one here, so it's not playing the whole time. Give that a bit of decay. So the idea being <laughs> is that as I play, this uh, on an oscillator there is going to accompany me. Oh, yes, it is. I'm not quite sure that's working as well as I'd hoped. I'm going to swap things around a little bit. All right, so now we're rocking. So I think, so I think what I discovered through doing this is that the envelope that comes out of here, the envelope that's coming from the guitar, is good for modulation. It's good for changing filters and perhaps other parameters. Not so good as an overall envelope for the amplitude. Partly because it doesn't really go down to zero particularly, or maybe I've missed out a calibration stage, that may also be true, but it's also hard to get it to open fully because that would require you to getting the level of the guitar absolutely perfect going through the injector module. And I don't have, I don't, have, I don't know, I can't, I don't have the skills for that. So instead I'm using the gate to fire an envelope over both the amplitude and the filter. And then here I am back with my accompaniment to my guitar. point I think is there a point I'm not really sure that the point perhaps is that you can use the gate out from this every time you hit it hard enough in order to fire that gate you could be using that as a clock you could be using that to keep the rest of the modular running in time with your guitar if you want it or you could be using it for opening an envelope you could be using it for starting something else you could be triggering for instance the uh, the surface up here to make a noise should I try that that could be dangerous
only thing is possible in the hands of someone with a little bit of talent. Why don't, while I've got the bass plugged in, let's, uh, let's just take rid of this gate business for the moment and just try it out through our friend the beads and the data bender. So, <laughs> well, fascinating in many, many ways. I mean, once you introduce another creative element into your Euro rack, then there's no end to where you could be going, where you could be taking yourself. It's a, it's another new direction. It's, it's fascinating. It really is. Uh, I've done guitar with, uh, with modular before, and it really is. I mean, it brings its own challenges because if you're playing an instrument, then you can't fiddle with the knobs. But then part of Eurorack is the fact that you are automating stuff. You are creating machine which which modulates and does all those things by itself. But on the on the other hand, you're introducing textures which you can you can process and use differently and create a whole different vibe. I mean, you could, of course, record some guitar into a loop pedal and then have that constantly going through your system. That's a possibility. You do also have a line output here, so you could run some of your guitar through this and then come back out to your amplifier and play normally like you were before. So you can blend those two things together. You can create uh, an effect send and return using the line out essentially through a bunch of pedals so you don't lose that functionality either. So a module like this can bring an awful lot to the party while at the same time feeling in some ways cumbersome in other ways exciting and and new and fresh it reminds you how fantastic it is to play a guitar or a string or an instrument of some kind and perhaps opens you up to the idea that you don't have to sacrifice one for the other but getting down to the injector all by itself the the amp simulation here is is excellent it works totally for me for me it's completely believable it sounds like i've got a guitar going through a proper you know amp and overdrive that kind of thing the quality of the sound coming out of this is by far for me good enough to make it sound like i'm playing guitar which i am so i don't need any other gear i could go to a gig with the injector in my case that I'm taking along, take a guitar and absolutely have that convincingly flow through the Euro rack. But also I don't have to have it playing like guitar. I mean, that's the option that Injector gives you. I don't have to be using the sound at all. I could purely be using the envelopes or I could be routing it through effects like Bees, like Data Bender, and just using the result of those rather than the guitar sound at all. So I don't even have to play the guitar like a guitar. I can play it in any other way just to create the sounds and the textures, which means you could also take in other things like a thumb piano or a thing you hit or something else which has some kind of pickup on it. You could be stuffing into here and using. So yeah, very, very versatile. But I'm really enjoying the, the drive on this, uh, the presence and character knobs, all of that sounds to me like I'm playing guitar. So there you go, the injector from Board Brain.
That's the sort of module that's going to expand and excite your life. I hope that was helpful. And in the meantime, go make some tunes. Bye.